Hey, what's up? My name is Steve and I'm a commercial photographer based out of New Haven, Connecticut. And you might be wondering who is this guy and what is he doing here? Well, I'm gonna dive into that a little bit later, so make sure you stick around. But first, I wanna talk to you about the five reasons where I think Capture One is better than Lightroom. Let's dive right in. Now, I know I just said let's dive right in, but I wanna give just a little bit of context. I started using Lightroom when it was in beta, so I've got a bunch of experience with that. I only recently transitioned over to Capture One, maybe in the past five or six years. So I just want you to kind of keep that in the frame of mind when I'm going through these things. It should also be worth mentioning that I'm not gonna do a full deep dive into each one of these things. These are in no particular order, but the first one I wanna talk about right now is color. Overall, just color control, more color control in Capture One. That was one of the first things that I noticed when I started clicking around and playing with it. So you're gonna see the things that you're used to seeing right over here, like in your basic color editor, but over here in advance, what's really great is I can select a color with the target selection tool, and then now I can really refine this purple. How much of that purple um, do I maybe wanna move it a little bit more into the red space, into the blue space, and then also down here, if I check this little box, it will allow me to mask everything else except for that color. So this makes it a little bit easier when you're trying to add to that selection. So here you can see I can refine this, I can adjust the smoothness. This is something that I miss from using in Aperture back in the day when Aperture was a thing. Okay, color aside, yes, it's got great color control, but specifically the one area where it is superior to anything else that I've used is skin tone. It has a dedicated panel here for skin tone. You grab your eyedropper, you select a skin tone, and then now I can go through and refine that. I'm gonna mask it again like I did with the color, and I wanna make sure I'm just getting the skin tone that I wanna work with. I can start to remove some of these reds to pull out some of that lip color, and now I know I'm targeting just the skin tone. What's cool about this is the uniformity slider. This is huge. If I crank this all the way over, you're gonna see that now there is one unified skin tone. If you have someone who's a little bit blotchy or maybe there's a little bit more red and yellow inside of that skin tone and you wanna just smooth all of that out, there's a slider for that. I'm just gonna crank all of these way up so you can really see what it's doing, is it's just evening out everything. And if I uncheck the mask to bring in those additional colors that we had previously, uh, maybe I need to pull out a little bit more of those uh, that lip color there. There we go. I've just smoothed out the skin in a couple of clicks. And number two, let's talk about customization, specifically within the panels. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I could grab any one of these panels and just rearrange them. I could just drag it up and on top here or drag it down to the bottom. Lightroom recently added something where they allowed you to do this, but Capture One kind of recognized that commercial photographers maybe want to be able to have scattered thoughts. Uh, so I could drag any one of these out and just kind of have them floating. I could have multiple panels floating around here. Um, I could go into any of these other tabs and just pull some of these off to the side. Um, I could group them differently. I could hold the command key and rearrange some of these tabs if I wanted to. I could even create my own custom tab give it a name, give it an icon, throw a bunch of panels in there that I know I wanna use, or if you wanted to just grab any panel, you could do the same thing and just add any one of these tools and have them available for you. So it's really nice that they've gone out of their way to make sure that everything could be manipulated and rearranged. It should also be worth noting that you could do the same thing basically for keyboard shortcuts. If one exists, you wanna replace it with something else, go for it. Now I will say this actually, there were a couple things that I customized in Capture One that I actually pulled from Lightroom. So as much as I might wanna say Capture One is better, there were some shortcuts like the slash key that I like to use for before and after quick preview. Um, so it's nice that you can customize it to the way that works for you. Number three, here we go, layers. Now, a lot of people say, well, I don't need layers. No, I, for the most part, don't need layers here. Where I need layers are something like Photoshop, right? And in Lightroom, you had these pins. When you were in the develop module and you used brush, you had these pins, but you had to remember where the pins were right? And you had to remember what that pin was connected to. So if you used multiple pins for dodging, which wouldn't necessarily make the most sense, but some things you might've wanted a half a stop, some you wanted a full stop, etc., etc. Layers are the savior, right? Because now I could label it green glass. Now I could label it dodge. Uh, I have a background layer. I can turn them on and off. And what's also really cool about Capture One is that I can apply any one of these adjustments to any layer and not just something that I would brush on if I wanted to add it to a radial or linear gradient, I could do that too. So it's very powerful in the ability for you to have those layers. But ultimately, if you're really doing heavy, heavy, heavy handed layering, you're probably still gonna wanna go to Photoshop, but it's really nice that it's here. Number four is the big one. It's the main reason I moved over to Capture One, tethering. 
Yes, you've probably heard of it, but tethering is far superior in Capture One than I personally have used in anything else. Now, I don't really have the setup here at the home office for me to demonstrate that. Ideally, what I'd like to do is take all of these five functions and features and create additional videos out of them. This one for sure, because tethering is so seamless and so simple. I use Canon and I know Lightroom recently did an update for Canon users specifically, and it did get a little bit better, but it's still not as good as Capture One. The live overlays, the Capture Pilot, the Capture One Live Beta, that's a brand new feature that doesn't exist anywhere else. The ability for you to ingest your images and have them sent to a web browser for a client to review remotely, that doesn't exist anywhere else. Not, not seamlessly anyway. So for me, the biggest thing is when I plug in my camera or sometimes two cameras and I can toggle between them in Capture One, whether I'm doing an overhead shot and a three quarter shot at the same time for similar setups, knowing that it's gonna work flawlessly here, that's the biggest one. If I could put one at the top of the list, it'd probably be this one. Number five is not something I use nearly as much as I use tethering. I use tethering all the time, but this is something that I use and it's really helpful when I do, so I'm really glad that it's there, and it's markup, or as they call it, annotations. So in a lot of what I do is I'll, I'll go through and I'll do a photo shoot, we'll narrow down the selects, I'll sit down with an art director, and then we'll go over the things that need to be edited. And the ability for you to have this right here built in and have all of these markups and, and just draw notes and, and make little comments like yellow, that says yellow, I swear. And it's just really nice so that that way when I go through and I need to do all of the retouching, I just have the reference right there. Um, so a lot of times I'm actually marking it up and an art director is sitting with me or we're doing a screen share and we're going over it together and I'm just marking everything up on all of the final images that, that need just that. And it's that simple. And it's one of those things that it's like, yes, Capture One gets it. They recognize that their tool is used primarily for commercial use, right? And if you're not familiar, Capture One is owned by Phase One, who makes medium format cameras. And those typically, again, are reserved for commercial photographers. So they've built this tool that's that's really made for that purpose, right? The ability to connect their cameras to their software. They've now obviously opened it up for everyone else, and I'm really glad that they have. So. It's not necessarily to throw shade at Lightroom, but using Capture One, my workflow has increased in, in the best ways possible. Again, the biggest one is tethering. So there you have it. Five reasons where I think Capture One is better than Lightroom. If you are a Lightroom hardcore user and lover and you despise Capture One, that's okay. I used Lightroom for a long time, but I just really find that in my workflow and what I do, Capture One is far superior. Now, that point, who am I? What do I do? Why am I here, right? So again, my name is Steve Walter. I'm based in New Haven, Connecticut. I work as an associate creative director at a marketing agency called Digital Surgeons. My day-to-day -day is basically any kind of photo or video project that comes through the agency, I've got hands on it. I'm either managing it, producing it, shooting it, directing it, um, you name it. Primarily my background is as a photographer. I started off shooting families, landscapes, weddings, you know, as many people do, right? When you kind of get into that space of the passion of photography, right? You shoot those things that are more easily accessible. And through time, I did a little bit more of creative portraits. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call them fine art, maybe more editorial, things like that. And then I slowly started to transition to doing more product work and advertising and, connected back to the roots that I had of working as a graphic designer. So that's my background, that's my trade where I was trained. And I worked at a marketing agency years ago for about eight years. So I've kind of come a little bit full circle, but now acting as that content creator and not the designer. I still love design, uh, but I just don't have the chops that I once had. So I'm much happier now in a place of shooting photo and video content. That's what I hope to be able to bring to this new channel and I'm very grateful that Rob invited me to share and contribute because I wanna take these real world experiences that I have working at the agency and being able to share them with you. Now, primarily one of the things that I do wanna do is talk about Capture One, right? Because you are probably a photographer or somehow associated with photography. So I wanna make sure it's as relatable as possible. But I do wanna dive into those areas where maybe we could talk about content creation. I put that in quotes because it seems like that's sort of a blanket for any kind of photo or video content. 
But if it is something that you're interested in, please drop some comments. Let me know. Uh, there's definitely a lot that I want to be able to share, but I think first and foremost, we'll be diving into more Capture One stuff. I hope that was insightful, thoughtful, helpful, any of those things. Uh, if it was, awesome. Hit subscribe, hit the bell. That way you'll see more of me and more of others. Until next time, thanks.